Whether you're conquering professional exams or personal milestones, we welcome you to Beyond Clean's Confidence Certification, the 52-week test prep podcast series. With expert insights, actionable tips, and engaging discussions, we'll break down the toughest concepts in sterile processing and build your confidence every step of the way. Join host Sarah B. Cruz as she embarks on a mission to help you not just prep for tests, but craft your success story. And now your host, Sarah B. Cruz. Hello and welcome. You're listening to Confidence Certification, a 52-week test prep podcast series to equip you to take your sterile processing career to the next level. I'm your host, Sarah B. Cruz, and on this episode, we are going to be talking about practice tests, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So today, I want to speak specifically to the variety of physical tools that we can utilize to demonstrate our own subject matter comprehension. Physical tools, objects, programs, any of these formats are great ways to get an honest assessment of the current state of our understanding. That is the main goal of a practice test. They warm us up and get us used to being asked questions about sterile processing. This is a great way to familiarize yourself with the question format and multiple choice skills that we went over in previous episodes. It may also help with test anxiety as it can help lower the barrier between your mind and the task. Practice tests also serve as a confidence boost. It feels so good to see all the correct answers on a practice test. Am I right? It's just, it's just so validating. It's like all of my studying paid off, right? It also serves as a reality check. Uh, Maybe you're not getting as many as you thought right, right? (laughs) That's always a bummer. But sometimes having that honest assessment, that level set with ourselves and seeing what we're getting correct and what we're getting wrong is going to be extremely important to help us focus on what we need to study. So when should we start practice tests? I recommend utilizing them throughout the entire study process. You can start using them from day one. If you wanted to, you can go ahead and take a sterile processing practice test pre-test before you even start studying for your sterile processing certification. I like to do those because I kind of see like where I'm starting from. Obviously, if you're very uncomfortable taking tests, maybe don't do a pre-test on stuff you don't know anything about. But if you're like me out there, go for it, right? But I do recommend utilizing them throughout your entire study process. I know, I probably shouldn't have made this episode so late in the series. But when I referred to practice tests in other episodes, I did get a lot of feedback saying that they wish they had more information on this topic. So here we are today. So if you're utilizing practice tests, you can actually use them as chapter quizzes. They will help identify the areas that maybe you're not getting as well as you think you are and even highlight the areas where you really understand it and you should probably stop investing the time. Now, I'm not saying don't study those areas just because you're getting them right on your practice test. But if you only have a certain amount of time to study during the day, the practice test will show you where you should be spending more of your time, right? Because you're not getting the answers correct. It's a nice way to support you throughout the chapter because then when you finish the chapter, you can go back because it's still fresh in your mind and you can rebuild those foundations that you need to help you understand and remember the content that you're getting incorrect, you know, or maybe you are a little more severe, right? You know, maybe you tend to get a little bit down on yourself when you're getting all these questions wrong on the chapter quizzes or the practice tests, right? It's really nice because it does show you the things that you are getting right. Now, if you've only gotten three things right on your practice test, don't let that get to you. You are great at those three questions, okay? There's going to be plenty of time to learn everything that you need in sterile processing. And I have never met the natural born sterile processing professional, okay? It's not like you're just born with it, okay? Everybody has to become a sterile processing professional. And at one point, we were all terrible, 
at every single chapter in our book. So after a quick break and a word from our sponsor, we'll talk a little bit more about the different tools that are out there that supplement practice tests. We'll be right back. It's time for our mid-episode confidence boost, where we focus on a key sterile processing test concept. Now, there's no guarantee these concepts will be on the test that you'll take, but they are key concepts to the workplace and are discussed in the literature. Today, we'll cover phases of a steam sterilizer. The steam autoclave goes through phases in order to sterilize instrumentation. Dynamic air removal and gravity displacement go through four phases. The first is the conditioning phase. During this phase, air is removed from the sterilizer chamber and steam is injected. The second stage is sterilization or exposure or the holding phase. In this phase, the exposure temperature is maintained for the prescribed amount of time. The next phase is the exhaust phase. After the exposure phase, steam is exhausted from the sterilizer through the chamber drain line. And then finally, the drying phase. After the steam has been exhausted, the sterilizer goes into the drying phase of the cycle, which typically lasts about 30 minutes. That's going to wrap this week's mid-session confidence boost. Good luck. Hey, everybody, and welcome back. We are talking about practice tests and how to incorporate them into our study habits. Now, I want to take a second to tell you guys about the first six months of my sterile processing career, if you could call it that at that time, (laughs) because I was terrible. (laughs) I was a terrible sterile processing technician. I cooked things in steam sterilizers that needed to go in chemical sterilizers. I've melted scopes that probably cost more to replace than I would make in an entire year. I personally don't know how. I kept my first job in the first six months, honestly, because it was just so bad. You know, I'd come to work and, you know, the manager would call me in and say, okay, Sarah. And I like, all right, how big is the stack today? I don't know why. It's just like, I couldn't get it for some reason. I I think, honestly, I think I was overthinking it because if you know me, then you know, I overthink things. Yeah. But the reason why I share that story is because I want to further demonstrate that nobody is a natural born sterile processing professional. Okay. You may have things that you're good at. There's going to be chapters that you understand more initially than other chapters. That doesn't mean you're dumb. That doesn't mean that you're stupid, right? It just means that there's things that you get more readily than other things. Okay. Understanding the difference between gravity displacement and dynamic air removal is a learned process, okay? You don't just hear it once and automatically get it. So I shared my story to hopefully alleviate some of the negative talk or the pressure we're putting on ourselves when we take these practice tests or when we're even studying, okay? Now, let's talk a little bit about the quality of our practice tests. There are a number of practice tests available online from free in all these different formats to monthly subscriptions. Knowing how to select the right one is going to be important. One, especially if you're paying for them. Uh, Yeah, okay. I am not against paying for a quality sterile processing practice test. You know, and the ones, there are entire programs online that you can take that are very thorough. The tests questions are updated consistently. They reflect the test questions and accuracy. They aren't outdated information, you know, and some of the paid features is that they'll categorize the different areas that you need to study more in. So instead of just saying to yourself, well, I'm really terrible at the sterilization chapter, it will say, hey, you got all the questions about dynamic dynamic air removal correct, but maybe you need to revisit the vaporized hydrogen peroxide concept. That's where you need to spend more time because all of those questions you got incorrect. So being able to see on a bar how well you're doing versus 
investing the time where you need to invest the time is extremely strategic and and very clever. You know, making sure your time that you're spending is actually going to pay off. Now, there's also flashcards and other practice quizzes online. Please just keep in mind that some of these aren't updated after the person who created them has passed their test. All right. That means that the information on them could be outdated. Right. So if somebody made a practice quiz online in 2008 and passed their certification test in 2009, I can tell you right now the information has a high chance of not being accurate. Sure, there's some concepts in sterile processing that never change or haven't changed yet, but sterile processing is always evolving, always growing. Science is always changing and updating itself. So you really want to make sure that you're using practice tests that are relevant in their creation. If you can't tell when the test was made online, maybe refrain from using it. Another really great tool is to actually see if your accrediting body offers practice tests. Sometimes you can buy practice tests from the accrediting bodies and who better to get a practice test from? Literally the same organization that you're going to take the test with has created a document for you to practice with. Some of them even have workbooks full of chapter quizzes of multiple types, multiple lengths. And when it comes from the source of your certification test, you can bet that it's going to have the most accurate questions and the most up-to-date information on it. Now, keep in mind, don't memorize these things, okay, folks? Don't fall into the memorization trap. I can guarantee you that the questions you see in a practice quiz or a workbook will not be the questions you see on your certification test, okay? So don't just spend the time memorizing the answer and then be upset when you take your certification test and question number 47 from chapter one isn't on there. Now, As we wrap the episode, let's talk a little bit about homework. I want you to go and investigate some of the practice tests available online, being offered through the accrediting bodies that you're going to take your certification test with. You know, looking into the different options you have could really help supplement that learning. Now, if you're already using practice tests, make sure you go back and evaluate your answers for information on where you should be studying. I know it feels good to constantly get the same questions right over and over again, but understanding more topics is more important than that initial gratification of getting the same questions right. And if you're already using practice tests, please check them for accuracy and when they were made. That's going to wrap this week's episode, folks. See you next time. Bye. And that's going to do it for this week's episode. For more sterile processing education and resources, make sure to visit beyondclean.net or follow Beyond Clean on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to check out over a thousand SPD-related videos at youtube.com slash beyondclean. If you have any questions or comments for the show, you can reach out to info at beyondclean.net Finally, make sure to download the Beyond Clean mobile app on the Apple and Android app stores so that you don't miss a future episode of any of the other awesome Beyond Clean podcasts. My name is Sarah B. Cruz, and you've been listening to Confidence Certification. Until next time, keep fighting dirty and pass that test with confidence. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast series are of Sarah B. Cruz only and do not represent the companies she works for or collaborates with.